here's an electrical network with three resistors. And the question is, can you recover the resistances by making measurements at the three endpoints? Scott Baldridge and this is Geometry and Topology Today. Today we're getting, we get to meet Thomas Lamb, who's a professor of mathematics at University of Michigan. He's come down to the beautiful campus of Louisiana State University to give a talk in a graduate sem student seminar. And he's going to talk in a seminar about electrical networks. So Thomas, tell us a, a little bit more about this problem and, and how it, how it, uh, what you do with it in, in your mathematics. Right, so uh, in this problem, we're supposed to recover the resistances of a network by making measurements at the endpoints. For this uh, network, what we do is we set the voltage of one of the endpoints, for example, this one to 1, and the other endpoints to 0. We measure the current that flows through each uh, endpoint, and from that we can compute the three resistances. So the, the goal is to figure out what the resistances are based on just being able to make measurements. That's correct. At the ends. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit about how, how, what do you do to jazz this up for what mathematicians study? In general, we study uh, pictures like this and, uh, with many more um, resistances and with many more uh, endpoints and um, vertices. For example, we could branch out here instead of having three branches. We could have many more branches. And the, uh, the network could be much bigger with many more endpoints. So you can imagine things branching off in, in all directions and, and, and yes, so on. Yes, that's, that's right. And then you're allowed to, you might have a hundred different node endpoints, and then you're asking if I can make measurements at all the different endpoints, all hundred modes, uh, yes. can I then tell what are all the resistances inside Right, exactly. That's, that's the problem. And so what's the, what's the, the big, big theorem then that people study then? The, the theorem is to characterize, to say exactly which networks this can be done, this recovery procedure can be done. So, uh, um, so you can imagine, um, you, you classify the different types of networks, or different types of diagrams. Right, so uh, for example, there's a very simple network where this can't be done. Um, it's, uh, if, you take, if you take a network with two resistors in uh, series, uh, then we know that um, the electrical properties of this network can be imitated by a single uh, resistor, which has resistance equal to the sum of these uh, uh, resistors. So you cannot, uh, you cannot recover both of these resistances from making measurements at these two endpoints. And that kind of makes sense, right, back from our high school exactly. uh, uh, physics courses and so on. Um, you just can't tell what's, what's going on inside here. Right. But in other cases, though, you can. Yes. Can you give us an example of, of how this is used in, in real life? Um, so uh, the typical application of this is in medical imaging. So you imagine that you have a patient and they have a tumor, for example, in the brain. You don't know where this tumor is, but you assume that the tumor has different uh, resistance to the rest of the brain. So you, you place some electrodes on the skull and you make some measurements um, and you can recover the location of the tumor. You're actually finding the resistant tumor inside. You can think of this as your brain, and, and here are the electrodes. Right, that's correct. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, just one more question. What got you interested in mathematics? What, be, what made you think of, of becoming a math professor and then going on to become a professor at, at University of Michigan? Uh, when I was in high school, I participated in the um, International Mathematics Olympiad. What? You said Olympiad? Right, that's correct. So tell, tell the viewers what the Olympiad is. So the Olympiad is uh, uh, Olympics for Mathematics high school students. Um, it's How many, w is it just uh, people in the United States that do this, or what, what, no. what's the? So it has um, uh, what, what participants your... from uh, all around the world. In fact, I, part I um, represented the Australian team. Oh, really? And, and so there's from many, many, many different countries. Yes, that's right. Many different countries participate. Really? And, and what's it like to be at the Olympiad? Oh, it, w it was very, very exciting. Um, uh, the Olympiad in my year was held in Argentina, um, and I had never been to South America before, so it was a, it was a great experience. Um, it was held in Mar del Plata, uh, which was a beach, and um, with many other high school students, we spent most of a week in, um, 
in a hotel, and uh, we had right two days beach. of competitions. Yeah. Oh, so, so like the whole week, you got to interact with other other kids that were all excited about math, and then and then you had two days where you were actually in the competition. Yes, that, that's right. It was. What was you? What were you doing outside of the uh, outside of the actual competition? So, uh, well, we we had. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing other things, and uh, I played soccer, for example. Oh, great. And so um, that, having that experience in your life, then that was the kind of the thing that said, oh, maybe there's something here that I can do. Yes, it was, uh, it was very important for me in deciding to become a mathematician. Well, thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Really, it, it was a pleasure to have you here. And, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching.